many people in government are looking very carefully at what happens to their careers after they leave government and when they can make money. And unfortunately, that's become a very important and powerful factor. Uh, and then, of course, politicians also want to get reelected, and they need campaign contributions to get reelected. That also is a very important factor. There have been times, though, when people, even in government, have spoken out about right. this. Right, whistleblowers too. Yeah. And in fact, very high-level people. Uh, Brooksley Bourne was chairwoman, chairperson of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, very powerful organization. She tried to regulate derivatives in the late 1990s, and she was shut down very, very hard by uh, Robert Rubin and Larry Summers. Why? Well, it, uh, that's a good question. One could, again, fear that money was involved. Uh, perhaps they also sincerely believed this, but, but shortly after Robert Rubin, as Treasury Secretary, was deeply involved in several deregulatory uh, pieces of legislation, including banning the regulation of derivatives, uh, he took a position as vice chairman of Citigroup and made over $125 million over the succeeding decade. Uh, Larry Summers, his successor, his successor as Treasury Secretary, made somewhere between $20 and $40 million from financial services firms while he was president of Harvard. Um, and again, we only know that because when he re-entered the government recently, he was required to file a federal financial disclosure form. There is no disclosure requirement from Harvard, and Harvard refuses to answer questions about these issues. Do you think that there was also collective greed at work, you know, that individuals may have been getting wealthier, but they saw a lot of other people getting wealthier, and they were like, this is great. Our economy is really thriving. This is, of course, before the the everything came crashing down. But everybody's making so much money. I know that there's somebody in the documentary who says it's unprecedented wealth. You know, we were in this era of... of, of in extraordinary wealth. It was almost like a second gilded age. So do you think in some ways people were just seeing, uh, thinking that this was okay? Well, many normal people, of course, thought that it was, uh, that it was okay because they were being told that it was okay. And, and, and they were making lots of money, too. Yes, the, you yeah, know. It, because everybody's house was going up in value, and uh, so you could sell your house for more than you paid for it, and you could borrow against it. So everybody had a wonderful party for a while, but it is very clear that many high-level people on Wall Street knew perfectly well that this was not, in fact, real or sustainable or fair.